A user on the other results video had mentioned that there was a Cyrix utility to enable the cache on this 486 SLC processor. Uh, that got some gears going in my head, along with some doubts as to the processor actually being that slow and people marketing it and even doing like an SLC2 in the future. So I went ahead and checked out the BIOS and there was a feature in there that I hadn't turned on for enabling the internal cache on the processor. I went ahead and did that and I ran through the benchmarks again. The results are pretty astounding. 70% uh, increase in Doom, another 70% in 3D Bench. And in PC Player Bench, the performance doubles from this processor upgrade. It is a huge upgrade. Um, this is running at 40 megahertz. I have a problem with the clock speed divider on this motherboard for some reason. No matter what it's set to, the clock input to the processor is always 80 megahertz, which is double the actual clock. And I haven't been able to figure out why. The ISA bus, I didn't play with that either. The ISA clock divider on this motherboard is controlled by jumper J4. And that particular jumper does work. So what happens is you set the, the two jumpers for 33 megahertz. The processor clock doesn't drop, but the divider for the ISA clock does change. So you end up with a 10 megahertz ISA speed. I didn't do that for these benchmarks, though. I went ahead and left it at the 40 megahertz and the 8 megahertz ISA clock to give it kind of a, you know, a fair shake. But it is possible on this motherboard to give it a um, slight ISA overclock. It's quite amazing to me looking at these results, seeing just what one kilobyte of on-die cache does. The memory bandwidth in SpeedSys went from 51 megabytes a second on the 386SX up to 105 megabytes a second in the 486SLC. That is just a huge increase, and you can see it right here on the screen. So these are the actual benchmarks, not the other ones. All right, that's our 486SLC upgrade. Not as smooth as I was expecting, um, but you know, we all learn here, word to the wise, don't use these 486 SLCs on a 5 volt board for your upgrade. It's not as simple as that, but with every challenge, you know, comes some learning. I was able to successfully desolder this processor from a donor board and soldered onto here and it works just fine. No damage, no problems, which is going to be important a little later on because I've got to desolder four memory chips off this video card to solder them onto a motherboard to upgrade the video RAM on another project I'll be posting. So, yeah, now I've got two identical motherboards, one with a 486 SLC, another one with a 386 SX40. The ISA bus overclocking issue I'm going to have to work through, but uh, maybe I'll put an update out on that when I figure that out. Anyway, this is K2's Retro Workshop. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or concerns, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Thanks.